So thank you so much for inviting me. I am going to speak briefly about uh, a syndrome seen during the treatment of uh, acute, uh, patients with acute myeloid leukemia and IDH2 mutations. So there was an ongoing uh, phase one dose escalation and dose expansion study of the IDH2 inhibitor and acidinib in patients with IDH2 mutant AML. Uh, an uh, unexpected but serious uh, adverse event uh, was uh, seen in a minority of the patients uh, that manifested in a constellation of signs and symptoms. Um, fairly similar and akin to what had been previously seen in cases of acute promyelocytic leukemia uh, where patients had been treated with differentiating agents in that disease, the agents being all-trans retinoic acid and arsenic trioxide. Those uh, drugs in uh, acute promyelocytic leukemia caused differentiation, and that was thought to be the mechanism of the syndrome that resulted. Similarly, an acidinib also causes differentiation in IDH2 mutant acute myeloid leukemia, mainly through its effect of suppressing 2-hydroxyglutarate production in those patients. 2-hydroxyglutarate is an oncometabolite that suppresses maturation and differentiation in uh, the leukemogenesis of AML, and when you give an acidinib and you suppress 2-HG, you allow differentiation and maturation to resume. As a result, patients respond, or a subset of patients respond, and a subset of patients, a minority, also have a syndrome called a differentiation syndrome, and we termed it IDH differentiation syndrome. It's slightly different than what's seen in acute promyelocytic leukemia in terms of timing. It tends to occur at approximately day 30. It affected about 12% of patients. Its primary manifestations were uh, respiratory, namely cough, hypoxia, lung infiltrates, but also unexplained fevers, kidney injury, and rash. This syndrome can be life-threatening if it's not recognized promptly and managed carefully. The primary approach to management is systemic corticosteroids, and if there is coexistent uh, leukocytosis, elevation in white blood cell count, we use hydroxyurea uh, to manage that. Uh, patients were effectively managed with these strategies. On occasion, if initial approaches and strategies are not effective, the dosing was interrupted, uh, but was, there was never a need for permanent discontinuation of anacidinib uh, on study. Uh, so therefore, uh, this drug, uh, being particularly effective in a subset of patients, uh, does not need to be permanently discontinued, but this potentially serious complication, this differentiation syndrome, uh, with the manifestations and signs and symptoms that I've described, has to be promptly recognized and managed effectively uh, so that patients are treated safely and effectively. Mm -hmm.